Today in Canada, the sun is actually shining, but I still tell you, I still miss Jamaica a lot of for obvious reasons. We've had a horrible winter. And speaking of missing Jamaica, we have the real Miss Jamaica. Can you believe it? I am here with Gina Hargitay. Welcome and nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Yes. How do you like our weather so far? So far, <laughs> I mean, I was expecting a lot worse, actually. Yeah. I was scared when I heard about the minus 30 and minus 20 and all kind of minus that's been going on. Yeah. But the sun came out and it's in plus degrees so i'm very happy good well you brought some sunshine with you at least you know apparently yeah, yeah. i brought it especially for you it was my gift to thank Canada. you thank <laughs> you <laughs> and i hear last night you were at a gala in toronto yes yeah and tess Hatchin was there yes. and all kind of stuff tell us about that what was that well it was about? the ue gala yeah. and it's um a gala that raises money for scholarships for Fantastic. uu students who can't afford to continue their studies so it actually provides a lot of scholarships. Last year, they received over enough for over 30, 30 mm -hmm. students to complete their studies, which is really amazing. Whoa. And they also honored several people with awards like the Luminary Awards, Chancellor Awards for their outstanding service to the Caribbean. Right. Wonderful. Now, your your mother, Marlene, was telling us that you some good news that you are... I'm um, going to be an ambassador, is that true, or are we letting the cat out of the bag here? <laughs> well, at the moment, yes, I'm pushing to become a UN ambassador. Wow. Um, at the moment, I've been working with UNAIDS in Jamaica, mm -hmm. so a regional ambassador, and hopefully that will turn into a global ambassadorship. Fantastic. Well, yeah, you have a busy, hectic schedule. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Well, at, you're 18, right? So 19. You, you, 19. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So you've, you've got all the stamina in the world for sure. But you seem to have a passion for charities as well. And, you know, that's somewhat surprising for somebody your age because uh, we're in the home of, of Carlene and, and late Matt Bean, by the way. And we were discussing at 19, what were we doing? Well, we were probably riding bicycles and you know, getting up to all kinds of stuff. But your generation, for some reason, you know, has, has a completely different view on life where does this passion come from to be engaged in charities at such a young age well i think it's it's something that i've always been involved in it's something that i've always had a passion for mostly because of my parents and their influence they've always taught us mm. my siblings and i to be very conscious very socially responsible people right and so whenever we're faced with tragedy or whenever we're faced with challenges we always rise to the occasion by trying to fight back and do something mm. so my charity work really started when i was probably about 13 wow. my aunt was diagnosed with breast cancer right. and um, we were living in london at the time and so every year from then on i would do the race for life which is a cancer marathon mm -hmm. raising raising money for cancer research mm. and um, from that i'm also very passionate about children and so wow. i was very happy that the Miss Jamaica World organization was working with four charities all to do with children. Mm -hmm. Terrific. So just go through some of those charities as well. Because like, four or five of them, you, you said you were in Four, yeah. and uh, we've just recently added a fifth. So wow. we started off with STEP, which is the School for the Therapy, Education, and Parenting of Children with Various Disabilities, mm -hmm. as well as McCam Child Care Center. And they cater to children with mental dis disabilities like autism wow. and um, and Down syndrome. Yes. They're actually pioneering for the first autistic classroom in Jamaica. Really? So we're trying to help them raise funds for that. Wow. As well as St. Patrick's Foundation uh -huh. and um, School for the Deaf. Yes. And for School for the Deaf, I'm learning some sign language. Terrific. And then recently, I was the um, one of the ambassadors for the Kingston City Run, second mm -hmm. annual Kingston City Run. Mm -hmm. They deal a lot with charities for the poor. Yes. And one of one of their charities is Missionaries for the Poor. Right. And so my franchise holder and I, we got the opportunity to go and visit and see the work that these people do. And it's amazing and mm. heartbreaking, the struggles that these people are going through, not only adults, but little children whose parents couldn't deal with them, right. children with disabilities, as well as just children whose mm -hmm. parents just couldn't handle it and left them. And so these children who are just in cribs all day, they don't really move much. They don't really get out much. It's heartbreaking. And so we really wanted to be involved in that. Wow, that is absolutely terrific. So let, let's talk about um, brand Jamaica for a moment. You know, we have some super track stars. We have footballers. We have some serious singers, musicians, artists, etc. But brand Jamaica naturally is it seems to be just expanding worldwide. So how have you seen in a, in a beauty pageant, Miss Jamaica specifically, um, being able to, to galvanize brand Jamaica? 
Well, it's an honor, really. I mean, it's something that when I entered the competition, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to gain this title in order to be an ambassador for my country. I mm -hmm. wanted to give back to a community that's always been dear to my heart and one that I've always wanted to help, one that I've always wanted to be involved in. Right. And so it's an honor to be able to represent it on a global scale, as well as locally. I love being in Jamaica. I love being a face for young people. And it's, it's crazy for me because I'm so young and mm -hmm. to be able to... Mm -hmm have people come up to me and say that I inspire them and they look up to me. It's wow. insane. I just, I never would have expected it, but it's really, yeah. it's an honor and I'm so humbled by the that experience. That is terrific. So what else does, does the world not know about you? What, what else do you do besides, you know, the obvious? Well, I mean, otherwise I love sports. Yeah? What, yeah. what specifically? What's, what's your... So many. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I, I started swimming when I was two, yeah. my father taught me to swim. Nice. Um, my sister and I swam competitively for St. Really? Time. Oh. Until we moved to London and then we swam competitively for our borough in London. Fantastic. I also do martial arts. I'm a blue belt in Taekwondo. Really? Yes. Let, let me just kind of back up. <laughs> <laughs> I've done tennis, netball, hockey. Really? Uh, oh my tag goodness. rugby. Um, wow. Fencing. And you're what? 19? 19. <laughs> oh my goodness. So essentially my mom and dad always pushed us into ed yeah, extracurricular yeah. activities. Mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. mean I do modern jazz as well. I have a gold shield in modern jazz dance. What? So any sport or any activity that's ever been offered to me, I've essentially yeah. taken up. Yeah. I mean, I also play the cello, I play the piano, I sing. I've been in every choir and every school Are that I've kidding? ever been to. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, was, I was noticing. So you said you do a little bit of singing as well? Yes. Or, yeah, because you have an absolutely beautiful voice oh, thank for you. television, for radio, <laughs> for all kinds of stuff. And, and obviously there's a blend of an accent there between where you lived in London yes. somewhat and yes. the Jamaican accent. It's, a, it's an amazing Yeah, I get a lot of comments on the accent <clears throat> yeah. because it's just impossible to place people. Right, I know. Like, you, you go, where, where is that? Yeah, yes, but it's, exactly. It's fascinating. So is that a career you think you would probably consider in the future? Anything well, I really, you know, on camera? or I really like otherwise? public speaking. Right. And I love radio. I really like doing interviews, actually. And so that's something that I'd love to pursue. Fabulous. I've actually started doing a little bit of co-hosting. Before I left Jamaica, I mm -hmm. did two days of co-hosting nationwide with oh, yeah. and George. Sure. Yeah. And that's something that I hope to do again when I get back. Excellent. And maybe something will grow out of it or else on other radio programs. But I really, I love public speaking and I love I love this kind of chatter. I love yeah, yeah. I love this. So hopefully. So we're not going to hear it. That's why you're running for the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. People always ask me if I'm going to go into politics yeah, yeah. because I want to study history and politics. Right, sure. But I don't I don't know about politics. Yeah. I think just the public speaking. Is what, good. what would you do if you were prime minister of Jamaica? What would you do? We're not getting into politics at all. Like, you know, let's stay away from that. But just generally, what do you think are some of the things that Jamaica needs at this time? Because you're young, you represent a generation that's grown up in a digital revolution. You've grown up with social networking. You know, it, it, all of the old school stuff is sort of dying away. So yes. what do you think Jamaica's younger generation needs to be engaged in and to do to kind of see our country move from A to, to B? I really think that the most important thing is education. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look historically at society, what changes society is the indoctrination of youth to yes. the ideas that need to be done. So I think Jamaica and the world in general is in a sense of moral decay. Mm -hmm. We are losing the values that yes. our countries were built on. Right. And I really think that parents and the generation that's upcoming need to reinstill that moral yeah. and social responsibility. What the grandmas used to do. Exactly, right. exactly. And mm -hmm. what I always say is that, you know, back in the day in Jamaica, if you saw someone else's child misbehaving, you would mm -hmm. tell that child sure. off and the parent would Takes be like, yes, thank you. Raise a child, but yeah. nowadays, if a, a, another person's child is misbehaving and you tell yeah. them off, then you have the parent come saying, oh, right. wait, why are you talking to my child? Is my child. You can't tell yeah, me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's terrible. For it's, sure. It takes a village to raise a child. And yeah, I think it really, yeah. we need to instill more of that morality hmm. back into wow, our youth. That is wonderful. That's a wonderful message. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So where do you go from here? I mean, you leave Toronto and you're going to Ottawa, is it? You're, yes, you're going doing, to Ottawa. So what, what you're doing, what's I've happening? I've been asked now? to be the keynote speaker at the Afro-Caribbean Cotillion. Wow. So working on my speech for that. My goodness. <laughs> and <laughs> then after that, we will be going back to Jamaica, of course. Yes. I have a few other interviews. I have courtesy calls with several ministers of government here before I return to Wonderful. Jamaica. So very much looking forward to that. Wonderful. Are any legs include the Caribbean, the rest of the Caribbean at all? I mean, do you go to... 
Well, I, know, I was in the Cayman Islands, um, I right. think in November. I was there for a CONCACAF Sports Summit. Right. That's actually how I got involved in the UN. I gave a speech on the importance that grassroots football can have on the lives of underprivileged youth. Really? And I was actually recognized by a UN AIDS delegate. Is and, that right? And he's the one who encouraged me to be involved in the UN. And he then invited me to Senegal to the fourth Pan-African wow. UN Youth Leadership Summit. Oh, my goodness. And do you know that one of our daughters of Jamaica, Sibella, Marley mm -hmm. is involved in a new project now to yes. promote the reggae girls. Yes. So, uh, what's your take on, on on girls running things now on soccer? I think it's amazing. I think it's yeah. a really a really amazing endeavor. I mean, it just shows right. that as time goes on, the 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 boundaries we once had between race and gender they're yes, all slowly, slowly fading for sure. And I Absolutely. think it's amazing. But the girls know as far as because you played soccer as well, you I said did, right, yes. okay, and you 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 like the whole soccer thing. So what do you think we could do to get those girls moving along? <laughs> Why I don't mean, you be an ambassador for them? To, you see, put you I on would the spot love now. to. <laughs> if you're listening, yeah. hey. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but I think I think just yeah. more encouragement, more yeah, social yeah. encouragement, for more sure. more encouragement throughout the country for yeah. our young women to be involved in such yeah. activities is amazing. Yeah. And I think recognition for their for their talents for what they do exactly yeah, as well. And I, and I think getting back to your point about the educational aspect of it all, I think I think you can't have sports without helping people educationally yeah. we're just taking them and because of their athletic ability putting them into us into a circus environment and just leaving them there is not enough we yes. have to actually do something more for athletes exactly and at a grassroots level as well exactly so um it was great to meet you it was great to and, meet you. and anything you want to to just add to our listeners well my my mother always tells me to give a final message to Absolutely. you considering i'm a youth ambassador yes. so what I always say to young people and... Why don't you look, look into the camera? Oh, okay. and, and, and they, they <laughs> what I always say to young people is my personal motto and one that my parents have always instilled upon me that you have to do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do and you can never work too hard for something that you want. So go for it. <laughs> Excellent. Now, is there a particular website that you would want to direct people to, to whether it's the charities or your own personal website or well, something like that? Well, the Miss Jamaica of? World does have a fan page okay there's miss world jamaica and there's also my personal fan page which is gina h okay i also have twitter so you can follow me on twitter at gina hargitai okay and um yeah that's pretty much it excellent <laughs> good to meet you good to meet you too <laughs> you are my queen you're my miss Jai.